Well, the story reads as follows. Montreal has always been fertile ground for DJs, but Sheldon Kagan took it to the next level of business and entrepreneurship. Uh, the publication is Cash Box Magazine. Sheldon Kagan, Montreal Music Memories, 45 years in music and counting, and Sheldon Kagan joins us this afternoon. Sheldon, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, take us back for <laughs> 45 years, because I'm looking at a photo from Cashbox Magazine to the left, uh, a younger Sheldon Kagan uh, pulling out some vinyl from a record sleeve, and uh, I'm guessing about to do your thing as a DJ. Yeah, actually, that was taken in my bedroom when I lived at my parents. I was 13 years old, and that was a, a Rolling Stone album called 12 by 5. Ah, okay. And it was one of my first records. And just to the right of that, I had my record collection, which had about maybe 30 records in it. And it was like, wow, you know, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's come along and changed a lot since then. But, but really, seriously, way back at that point, I knew where I was going to go, and I knew that I was going to do whatever it took to, you know, take to get there. How did you know at that point, Sheldon? I just loved music. You know, when I was in school, you know, I'd be listening to, to radio announcers, and I'd be, uh, I, I was really fanatical about music, and, and I just wanted to entertain people. I mean, when I bump into people now that went to Northmount with me, every one of them says the same thing. You know, yeah, you were the guy that did the dances, and you did the parties, and it was just, it was just something about it that just made me tick. Sheldon Kagan joining us this afternoon, 45 years in music and counting. Sheldon, who were the um, the announcers who, 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 who shaped your career, who influenced you? Well, it was really Dave Boxer yep. at that stage, you know, and then there was a Buddy G who, mm -hmm. who was, you know, who was on CJD at that point, and I used to listen to them. I mean, I would get home, and at 7 o'clock, I'd listen to the radio, and uh, I won incredible contests. I mean, I bet the Beatles in Montreal. I met the Rolling Stones. That's how I started my record collection. And I, I would just win all the contests. And then I said, well, now it's my turn. I'm going to become a DJ. And at 14, I went out and did my first party. And uh, it was fun, and the people liked it. And, and it was just sort of like something that became like a passion. I was enthralled with it. Do you remember your first gig as a DJ? Yeah, it was actually it was, it was a church on Coast of St. Catherine called St. Paul's Church. Mm -hmm which is uh, still right there, right opposite the Jewish General Hospital. There were probably was 60 or 70 people. Uh, I had milk crates full of records, and, you know, I had to borrow transportation to be able to get there. It really was <laughs> something, and these little BSR plastic turntables. Yeah. And uh, uh, there was something called the Record Cave, which was a record store downtown, and uh, I went in to buy records, and he, he sort of gave me the name of Shelley the K. And that's what I started as my uh, stage dish jockey name way back then. It was Shelley the K and his musical review. Shelley the K and his musical review joining us this afternoon on the on the big show. Ape after in for Aaron Aranda, Montreal's news talk leader, CJAD 800. Uh, Sheldon, how did you move? Uh, how 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 did the business begin to grow for you then? Well, well, at some point I was getting way more work than I could handle, so I started hiring other dish jockeys. Uh, getting equipment and they all work through me and then the next step was going into live entertainment um, way back in the early 70s I probably had about 15 bands because all the high schools at those days were booking live entertainment so it was all about sock hops and the bands that you could book so we had a whole slew of bands doing all the schools and the c shops and colleges in Montreal and then I said, how can I get more business? How can I get weddings? So I came up with the idea to do my own bridal show, and I started something called Le Salon de la Marie 32 yeah. years ago. Had probably 20 exhibitors and maybe 50 brides. My next show will take place January 28th and 29th at the Palais des Congrès, and I've got over 150 exhibitors, and I'm expecting five to 6,000 visitors. You were talking about the bands that you began to uh, bring in. What were some of those bands? Well, in my early years, I, I really had this passion about jazz. So my first show was Dizzy Gillespie and Gene Krupa. And after that, I did the Glenn Miller Orchestra. And it really was starting to happen. And the third show threw a little bit of a monkey wrench in. I had um, Woody Herman and Buddy Rich, and I was completely sold out at Place des Arts. I had 2,963 tickets. And you got to realize that the tickets at that time were $3.50 <laughs> to 6.50 a ticket. 
That was it. And I was sold out. It was my third show. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be rich. Until I got a phone call on a Saturday morning from Los Angeles from the manager of Buddy Rich advising me that he just slipped his disc rehearsing for the Johnny Carson show and sorry he won't be coming to Montreal the next day. Ouch. Ouch. What do I do? And he was getting off the phone saying on Monday, call the agents and work it out. And I said, but what about the 2,963 people that are coming tomorrow? And he said, look, sorry, I, I can't help you. So I quickly flew one of my employees to New York City, hoping that maybe we can find somebody working in the village who wouldn't be performing on Sunday. And we came up with George Benson. And um, Bob got me on the phone with George Benson, and, and we cut a deal for him to come to Montreal for $1,500. That was it. And we drove him and his musicians to Montreal and, and rented equipment for them. And that night at Place des Arts, I, I got up and told people the situation. And we said, if you want a refund, of course, the box office is prepared to refund you. But, you know, we hope you'll stay. And about 35% of the people took refunds. Uh, in the end, it worked out well for me because, of course, I paid George Benson much less than Buddy Rich. Right. And I, I bump into people even now that say, I can't believe, you know, <laughs> for my 350 or 650, I got to listen to George Benson at Place des Arts. And indeed it was uh, on uh, December 12, 1969, again, according to the Cashbox article yeah. that you booked, Gene Krupa and Dizzy Gillespie. That was your for your first show at Place des Arts, is that yeah, correct? that's it. And then I did about 35 shows. Um, in the next three years, I did uh, Miles Davis. I had a, Duke Ellington came in. I brought Duke Ellington to Montreal five times over a period of four years, and he still is the most amazing musician, amazing person I've ever met. Uh, one day I walked into his dressing room, and he was tinkering at the piano, and he said, Hey, Sheldon, what do you think of this? And I sort of looked at him. You're asking me what I think of your song? Here's a man that I still believe today has recorded more albums than the Beatles. So for, to be able to deal with these incredible people and have such experiences is unbelievable. Uh, I also had a, a great event happen when I had Delaney and Bonnie, Billy yes. Preston, and John Hammond booked to come right. to Montreal. Mm -hmm. And Clive Davis, who was president of CBS at that point, personally called me and said, I've got a brand new act I'd like to break, and I don't want them to play in the States. Can you do me a favor and take out John Hammond, which is also a Columbia artist, and uh, book my act, Loggins and Messina. And I still have a contract with Kenny Loggins and Jim Messina for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Sheldon, I'm guessing maybe it's just me. Sheldon Kagan joining us this afternoon. Are you? You just strike me as being as as busy as busy today as you were 45 years ago. I am. Three weeks ago, we brought Dion Warwick to Montreal. Yeah, which was an amazing show. I mean, we all think back. Where were we when mm -hmm. that's what friends were for? All her songs, and uh, I had Oliver Jones and Rennie Lee, and, and it's lots of fun. And as long as it's fun, you know, I'm going to keep doing this for for who knows how long. Sheldon Kagan uh, joining us uh, this afternoon on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Sheldon, it's been an absolute joy um, chatting with you uh, this afternoon, and uh, uh, just appreciate you sharing your musical moments and memories uh, with us uh, today. And uh, I wish you and yours a, a happy and a healthy new year. And uh, Shelly, the K, keep rocking. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank